I'm very happy to be in such a nice place on a nice occasion of Samson's 60th birthday. <laughs> Nobody believes it happened. <laughs> uh, actually, the number is small. Yeah, but when I try to recall, to remember how we met for the first time, I cannot even remember if I first met you or I heard about you. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, it was the same. Um, very uh, sharp impression about a young researcher, a valuable member of uh, Fadiev's school, and we started uh, to, I wouldn't say collaborate, but a lot of scientific communication on various occasions in, in that country. <laughs> uh, actually, it was long ago, and to give you understanding of how long it ago it was, it was the time when St. Petersburg, Russia was Leningrad in the Soviet Union. And when th it was the time when the string theory was not yet science number one. And, and he was, uh, I was going to say that by that time everybody was young, except Brezhnev, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was a nice time. Uh, but since I'm in, uh, staying in front of a great storyteller, as everybody knows, so I, I won't bother you with <laughs> stories. <laughs> and also, I have to mention that I guess among the, those who are present here, I'm only the third oldest friend of Samson's. <laughs> So I switch to my talk, <laughs> and but I promise there will be a small birthday gift for you inside the talk. <laughs> so uh, it will be about conformal properties of a field theory called self-dual Young-Mills theory. And uh, my talk will be based on the joint work with uh, Andrei uh, Losev and Igor Polubin. And uh, also unfinished work with Igor Polubin. <coughs> this is about a theory which is described by the following Lagrangian, probably first considered by uh, Chalmers and Ziegel. And which is described as follows. First of all, we have uh, in this theory two fields, gauge field, a mu with arbitrary uh, gauge group. And another field is antisymmetric tensor field. P mu nu equals minus P nu nu, which is uh, kinematically constrained to be anti cell dual. Then we can form the following Lagrangian or action functional. Ah, yes, and the, the antisymmetric tensor field is in the joint representation of the gauge group. So we can write PF plus the topological term. The coefficient I will denote by tau over 8p squared. Uh, here I, I, I wrote the scalar product of tensors, but 
because P is anti-self dual, or up to a sign, it's the same as writing wedge product. So uh, the equations of motion for this theory are immediately understood. Our variation with respect to P gives the equation of cell duality for the gauge field. And um, the, the other equation is the covariant divergence of P equals zero. Again, you can understand it as a divergence or exterior derivative because P is anti cell dual, it's the same. Uh, uh, now we can regard this equation as follows. Uh, it is like uh, um, we, we would take the Young Mills equations and make it uh, self dual sector uh, and, uh, and make its anti self dual sector linearized. This is a linear equation with respect to P, and leaving the self dual sector non linear. Um, I can make these words more precise. Are passing to the light cone gauge. So in the light cone gauge, are, uh, uh, in in the standard Young Mills theory, uh, we have um, only two physical degrees of freedom, uh, and therefore. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, in certain um, reformulation called by this name, are, uh, we are left only with two fields, phi plus and phi minus. Phi plus is responsible to quanta or uh, to the right polarized gluons, and phi minus is responsible uh, for left polarized gluons. And the Lagrangian, in these terms, is written are, uh, symbolically in the following way. Phi minus Laplace phi plus. And then interaction terms, cubic and quartic as in Young Mills, which are of the following type. Um, I will not write them explicitly because I don't need this. Uh, there is a cubic term with uh, which is quadratic with respect to phi plus and linear with respect to phi minus. There is, of course, by CPT the opposite one with two phi minus and one phi plus. And there is a quartic term two phi minus, two phi plus. So this is the action, like on gauge action for the standard Young Mills. Now, if we just drop the uh, last two terms and leave only these two, this will correspond to the light con gauge formulation of the cell deal Young Mills. And here we see exactly that we leave only the terms linear with respect to phi minus and nonlinear with respect to phi plus. Uh, the equation uh, which come from here um, uh, with respect to phi, uh, um, equations for phi plus, which are nonlinear, are exactly this self duality equation. <coughs> Therefore, the words that this theory comes as linearization with respect to half of degrees of freedom makes sense. <coughs> okay, now I should mention, of course, that uh, the theory is not left-right symmetric, which is clear in uh, this formulation because we imposed such a constraint, and also in this formulation because it is not symmetric with respect to exchange of minus and plus. Uh, <coughs> therefore, it's not CPT invariant. And you can immediately observe that uh, this Lagrangian cannot um, be uh, formulated in terms of real fields 
uh, in Minkowski space, only in Euclidean signature, uh, or in signature 2 plus 2 minus. <coughs> but uh, for the questions I am going to discuss, this doesn't matter, we <laughs> regard this field theory as just a playground for understanding some <coughs> hopefully useful features of quantum field theory. <coughs> but what are these features and why it's a good playground? It's a good playground, first of all, because the theory is very simple in the following sense. Uh, so, uh, if we consider uh, correlation functions, there are very few. The perturbation theory stops at one loop. So, uh, let me write this in the following way. I list the only non-vanishing uh, correlation functions. All other will vanish. So the non-vanishing are the following. If you consider correlation function of uh, one field A and several fields P, uh, then we have and take um, connected part are, uh, and three level uh, Feynman diagrams. This may, uh, can be non-zero. Another non-vanishing case is when we consider several fields P, I mean inserted in different points, uh, and again consider connected part, uh, and take one loop. This is non-zero. All others vanish. This makes the theory <coughs> Uh, similar to some extent, similar to uh, uh, the string theory, which is uh, called, I guess, n equals 2 uh, super string considered uh, by Augurian Twaffe. In this theory, one also has uh, the, uh, the f on the level of effective field theory, uh, uh, the equations look similar to self-duality equations. And um, it also manifests the feature that it is real in, in the signature to plus to minus, and um, also has no uh, amplitudes um, uh, beyond one loop. As concerns amplitudes, it is difficult to speak, uh, uh, in this theory, difficult to speak about amplitudes in the uh, sense of physics, because um, there is no chance for unitarity. It's, uh, again, because uh, in Minkowski space, the uh, Lagrangian cannot be, make, cannot be made uh, real. Uh, but formally speaking, we can take correlation function, apply the uh, LSZ formula, reduction formula, obtain, uh, which means uh, amputate the legs and put them on, on shell, and obtain expressions which can be called amplitudes. What we shall uh, find here. And so on the level of amplitudes, Uh, this three level uh, correlation functions will give zero after uh, applying the reduction formula because otherwise they would coincide with uh, uh, amplitudes in the standard Young Mills, which have only one plus and several minus. And this vanish, uh, as it is well known, this vanish. So th three amplitudes. vanish. And one loop amplitudes coming from this correlation function uh, correspond to one loop 
amplitude with all plus uh, helicities, with all positive helicities at the uh, ends. Uh, and this done vanish and coincide with standard Young Mills. This is a distinguished amplitude in the stand question in the standard Young Mills because it is given by a rational function, which is easy to see when you cut this uh, diagram. Uh, the <coughs> the halves are, uh, are three <coughs> amplitudes which vanish in Young Mills. Therefore, it has no imaginary part. Therefore, it is given by a rational function. And it is regarded <laughs> often as sort of anomaly. It vanishes in Super, in any supersymmetric version of the young mill theory. Uh, but in standard young mills, it is non-vanishing, and it is the only amplitude which uh, uh, can appear for this self-dual young mills theory. <coughs> uh, so this was about, I was saying this to, to uh, uh, say that this theory is quite simple, therefore, uh, I still bear hope uh, th that everything can be solved exactly, but it did not happen. Oh, by the way, the formula for this amplitude is known since the 90s. It was cal computed by Malone. Uh, uh, it's a very explicit formula for arbitrary number of legs. <coughs> okay. Now, <laughs> Uh, what should I say? Uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, would be nice to, to, to solve this here exactly, but since I oh. since I uh, c uh, we cannot do this right now, uh, we still. Uh, are trying to, to uh, investigate uh, various properties and in particular with uh, most attention to conformal properties. But um, to say in advance, uh, several months ago I was much more enthusiastic about conformal properties of this theory, but since that we found that it's Unfortunately, it's not that simple as we expected. So, therefore, my conclusions will be, which I will give at the end, uh, will be not that uh, um, definite, but you will see. Now, wh what about quantum properties of this theory? First of all, there are ultraviolet divergences. Uh, uh, I, I should have said again that if we consider the supersymmetric version of the theory, then uh, the, the, the biggest change will be that the one loop correlation function will vanish and there will be no uh, divergence at all and the theory would be uh, essentially classical. What kind of this? Maybe yes. But uh, it, it will be um, about if, um, if we pass to the amplitudes. Ah, no, no, the answer is no. Because uh, the um, issue about infrared is applicable to the case of amplitudes, but all the amplitudes in supersymmetric version will vanish. The three amplitudes vanish, as I told you, and the one loop vanish for supersymmetry. Because the, uh, these one loop diagrams correspond to, uh, in superfield notation, they correspond to a one loop with all chiral fields at the end of the same chiral chirality. And this vanish, this F term. <coughs> so, uh, but in bosonic uh, theory, which I'm talking about, 
uh, there are um, actual um, ultraviolet divergences. I will describe them shortly. Uh, so, but as we shall see, these ultraviolet divergences result only in um, renormalization of the field, uh, of the, uh, yes, of, of the field, uh, but no running coupling constant. Uh, the, the fact that the, there is no running coupling constant is actually uh, very simple. It is immediately understood because uh, any coupling constant would be uh, um, uh, coefficient in front of this uh, of this part of the action, and it can be always absorbed into the field P. Therefore, there is essentially no coupling constant, and consequently no running of coupling constant. <coughs> Ah, if you, I will discuss possible other terms. If you add P of H P, it would be, uh, yes, if we add P squared or P of H P, which is the same, uh, this would make the theory equivalent to the standard Young wheels. Uh, if we perform Gaussian integration with respect to P, we get F squared. Sure, but I'm asking how do you know that it's not generated? Ah, because of computation. <laughs> The result of computing ultraviolet divergences in the one loop over there gives no p squared. Only and there must be some way to understand why. Yeah. Uh, you mean conceptually? Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know. No, I cannot say. This is simply the question that this theory is consistent. It's not. It's. It, I, I cannot. I have no good <laughs> explanation. It will be still metric independent because this is the conformal. It's conformal. It's still be conformal. Uh, who? With this term? Classically conformal. Yeah, I mean, quantum. Quantum. You cannot require metric independence because you already impose a self-duality condition. Yeah, it's metric dependent. Yeah, I, I will come to this issue in a moment. It's, it's, it's still. It's it, of course, it depends on the conformal class of the metric on the classical level. And if it would be p-square terms, then it would depend on metric, not on the conformal. On the quantum level, right. yes, of course. So the assumption which says it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's still not an argument that it is not generated. I mean, I, I know this only as a result of computation. But even before computation, when we write the final rules, you, you understand that, uh, okay, I tell you, I tell you. The argument is the for. Oh, let us discuss this in, 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 in seconds, okay? I come to this. Uh, this is a sort of uh, uh, list of features which I will describe in slightly more detail. Uh, but the, as a result of um, uh, cancelling uh, uh, um, divergences or introducing ultraviolet counter terms, we get uh, not only field re uh, renormalization, but also renormalization of the topological coupling. Uh, so we have running topological coupling tau. Uh, another feature is that this theory is classically uh, conformally invariant. which is obvious. On the quantum level, what can be immediately said that the one loop amplitude, not, not the correlation function, but the amplitude is conformally invariant. Another thing uh, one can prove on, on a certain formal level that this theory is almost a free theory. I will probably, if I have time, I will explain this. Um, 
It is a free theory up to some anomaly. Uh, and as concerns the um, precise statement of conformal invariance of the theory, this um, is left without answer. But the answer is not so easy. What, what would it mean that the theory is conformal? Uh, it would mean that we are able to construct a sufficient number of conformal operators whose correlation functions are conformally covariant, right? Um, so uh, for, for this, I have no definite answer. But uh, so I put this with a question mark. Is this theory conformal or conformally invariant? So <coughs> let me uh, answer uh, this, uh, give more details and ask, answer your question. So first, before um, describing more precisely, let us discuss what could be the uh, other the possible other terms in this, such an action. So I mean local terms of the same dimension. As you suggested, th there could be a p squared term, so, but this would lead to standard Young Mills, right? By the way, uh, it uh, gives us a possibility to uh, uh, study the standard Young Mills theory with respect to um, as a perturbation theory with respect to inverse coupling constant if we add p squared here and consider it's in perturbation theory. Uh, but we don't do this, but in principle it's uh, a good, good probably point to investigate. <coughs> uh, another, uh, if what would happen if we add f squared term? Uh, then the theory remains the same because uh, f squared can be written as, uh, let me see, uh, li like, I guess, one half, huh? No, no, star f. f plus square plus f. F squared, uh, when I write square, I mean um, scalar product, as in, in field theory we usually write. Uh, so this is, uh, can... Sorry? You can shift p by star f plus Precisely. This is what I'm going to say. Uh, <coughs> so it can be, I guess, I should have one half here. f minus squared uh, plus uh, f times f dual. Wave means the dual of f. Uh, where f plus minus are... Uh, <coughs> mm, uh, cell, cell dual and anti cell dual part of f, which means one half f plus or minus f dual. So if we add this term f squared, it is the same as writing this um, uh, appearance of f uh, times f wave simply changes tau, and f minus can be absorbed as you anticipated f minus squared can be absorbed uh, by field redefinition with some coefficient since p is anti cell dual it's okay uh, so uh, this uh, is essentially doesn't change the theory. <coughs> now, uh, this is a good point to, to discuss the uh, stress tensor for such a Lagrangian. The stress tensor uh, T menu is sim similar in structure to the uh, stress tensor of Young Mills theory, is given by the following expression. Uh, 
plus symmetrization minus one half uh, p scalar product with f minus one half, not one fourth, because here I have two terms. So t is uh, uh, t is uh, traceless. Do we have water? No. Okay. Uh, t is traceless, uh, but uh, are, of course the, <laughs> there is uh, some degree of arbitrariness uh, in uh, definition of the stress tensor, in particular the coefficient of this term in front of this term uh, is uh, at our hand, uh, because <laughs> this means choosing a special conformal. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, because uh, this particular choice means that P is not the standard um, two-form, but the two-form with a certain conformal weight. It is uh, additionally, I guess, minus one-half density. Then uh, it is traceless. Now... Uh, this is a scalar product, contraction with respect to indices. Okay? <coughs> now, uh, notice that what would happen if I apply such a field redefinition in here. So, if I say write t menu as a function of p and f, then uh, uh, consider shifted p uh, then it is easy to see that nothing changes they are equal okay it's because if we consider such an expression where uh, p equals to f minus it is zero as easy to see but now uh, a puzzle for uh, interested listeners, which is, I, I give you as a birthday present. <laughs> that was my promise. Now, uh, let us do in other way. Let us first shift the field in the Lagrangian and then compute the uh, stress tensor. Uh, then we would have the Lagrangian, which is P F minus plus C f minus squared, okay, plus topological term. And f minus is the same up to redefinition here, is the same as f squared, right? And then the stress tensor will be p uh, f uh, plus f minus, plus f minus p, this symbolic for, for such a structure, minus g over 2, P F minus, this is the old result, plus the contribution from here. So it's not the same. What happened? This is a puzzle. It depends how do you define stress tension. There are several ways of defining it. If you define it as a generating function of the <coughs> It's just variation with respect to the metric. I define it. Definition will fail here because you Why? have a, because your shift, as we discussed, the metric dependence on shell, it's difficult to implement. Uh, on shell does not matter here. Uh, you are on the right way, but uh, mentioning on shell is is not needed. The standard is defined as a neutral current of C. <laughs> no, no, I define it. You can do this, uh, but I define it as as a variation with respect to metric. Okay, uh, we discuss it later. Yeah, it's not examination. I, 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 I <coughs> give you this gift that you solve it and then you can give it to your students. <coughs> to your students. I teach students that stress tensor is a general. It's the same. The same thing will happen here. Up to, uh, up to, uh, um, the terms which conserve 
uh, on a uh, trivially, th th these two definitions are the same, you know. Okay, let, let us discuss it later. <laughs> All right, now let us pass to the issue of ultraviolet divergences. There are only uh, three diagrams which diverge. It's a one, uh, one loop with two legs, uh, with three legs, the same as Young Mills. Otherwise, the theory would not be renormalizable. <coughs> now, as I mentioned, there are only uh, non trivial correlation functions with all P's. After amput amputation, uh, P becomes A because the propagator is uh, off diagonal. Therefore, uh, in, the term, in terms of amputated legs, I put A, field A here, okay? So we can consider this as a functional, we compute something in the external field A, gauge field A. Therefore, there are only divergences uh, which are um, the, the only counter terms will be local functionals of A. Therefore, P squared is not generated. Did I answer your question? <laughs> uh, such a counter term would appear if we had uh, a one loop divergence uh, where P is uh, on the legs uh, when they're amputated. But if we continue, <laughs> To non amputated case, it would be field A here. This would correspond to one loop correlation functions of two fields A. But there are no such diagrams at all. You simply cannot draw such a diagram. So there is a company PAA. Uh, PAA sits here. Yeah. So you have P outside. But, <laughs> okay, okay. Let us try to, to draw. Actually, uh, you, you should have asked your question um, at the uh, when uh, on the I wrote the the statement about um, uh, that the, those are the only non-vanishing correlation functions, but um, actually that statement is a simple con consequence of the fact that there is no coupling constant that it can be absorbed. You immediately derive the, that statement, but in simple terms, if I want to draw such a diagram. Let me start from here. There should be uh, uh, the only vertex we have is PAA, right? Th then <coughs> uh, there are following possibilities. I can send A here, P here, and A here. Then it will be similar to this. To, get, to have P here, I should send both A to the loop then they become two P's here, and there is no such a vertex. That's all. <coughs> yeah. Uh, therefore, P squared is not generated. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, if we compute these divergences of these diagrams, we get two counter terms. Because of lack of time, I don't write them in detail, uh, which generate F minus squared uh, and uh, logarithmic divergences and F times uh, F dual, uh, which renormalize the field P. This uh, makes field P renormalized and this makes tau renormalized. And for tau, we get the following um, renormalization group running. Uh, <coughs> remarkably, or maybe not surprisingly, I don't know, for, for the group SUN, we have the same, uh, exactly the same running as tau runs in young meals uh, up to one loop. And here it is the exact result, but the law is the same. Sorry, this was equivalent uh, to the ones that come from the beginning. This is full. Yeah, yeah. In, in standard young meals, in instant on computations, we didn't, uh, it is convenient to uh, write tau 
something like this. Um, plus i theta uh, uh, to separate it real and imaginary part. The real part in standard Young Mills uh, has the meaning of the coupling constant, of the genuine coupling constant, not like here. And theta is the topological term. And this guy runs, this does not run. We have the same, but for different reason. Okay, now as concerns are the normalization of the field P, let me uh, explain it in the following way. <coughs> uh, first, let me mention the general shape of the renormalization group equation. Uh, it will have the following shape. Um, do you have something like this. Our mu uh, over d mu of some correlation function equals, uh, here we have two terms, one corresponding to anomalous dimensions and one to the beta function. The one with the beta function here vanishes, so we have only uh, the, uh, the contribution from anomalous dimensions. And let me symbolically write it like this, where by gamma hat I understand some operator acting on the entries here, operator of anomalous dimensions. Uh, in our particular case, let us consider the correlation function of two p's. I'm sorry, was it important to fix some gauge? Which gauge are you fixing? Is yeah, of course, I should have mentioned. I assume uh, some z or r the way uh, introducing, um, uh, performing Fadiev Popov procedure, introducing gauge fixing term and ghost terms. The only thing I prefer, in this area, I prefer to deal not with, <coughs> I, I prefer to, to, to uh, write the gauge fixing with help of the uh, Lagrangian multiplier. So the extra terms added to that action will be B, scalar field B, oh, trace because everything is in the joint, times D mu A mu plus Gauss terms. Ghost Lagrangian. Usually we integrate over B and get the uh, divergence of A squared because the kinetic term is second order. But here the kinetic term is first order, so therefore it's more convenient to work with such formulation. <coughs> okay, uh, if we uh, consider this correlation function as a particular case, uh, differentiate with respect to logarithm of mu, we should we should get um, uh, as I mentioned the only contribution will, will correspond to the renormalization of the field P, which is renormalized by the following law. Gamma is some numeric coefficient which is computed exactly logarithm of regulator mass and mu times f minus. As a result, it will be the insertion of f minus here. So it will be um, plus the same terms where f minus in inserted in the second place. I don't spend time. Um, N then, note that f minus vanishes on the equations of motion, and therefore uh, it is a pure contact term. So, f minus, oh, let me leave this space. Uh, f minus, uh, in, in, in the sense of Dyson Schwinger equations, f minus can be written as. Uh, say i d over dp. Inserting this uh, means uh, that we get, as a, in the second term is the same actually, we shall get e gamma times delta function of x minus y, four dimensional delta function. 
So uh, this correlation function depends on the scale in such a simple way. And this is confirmed by computation. Uh, what sense? I mean, this partition functions. Uh, partition function is not invariant and rescaled, but multiplied by some constant depending. Constant? How do you see it? Ah, you mean because of this? Yeah, uh, no, no, I mean, AA a, a with these things, this, this, this contract term get kind of one dependent on fields. But. Uh, <sighs> oh, first of all, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand your point. Yeah, maybe yes, something like this. But actually, it would be. I would prefer to say that if we change the transformation law of the fields, that a the field a is transformed as usual under dilatation, that p is transformed in a modified way. <coughs> it is transformed as a tensor or density tensor plus additional term. F minus, then the whole thing remains invariant. This is, in principle, my goal to, would be to prove this. And this is almost proof. But uh, the uh, complicated part is uh, when we consider transformations with respect to uh, conformal boosts. Then everything becomes more complicated, and I cannot give definite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It gives me more. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm going to finish. Um, all right. So, just for curiosity, let me um, let me mention what the is the explicit form for for. Да, но нет времени, чтобы стирать доски. Так. Yes. So uh, the correlation function, which I mentioned, of 2p, uh, if we compute it for separated points, then it is uh, the following. The tensor structure is given by the operator of uh, the projector to the anti dual forms. And the uh, dependence on the points is very simple. But now uh, this uh, needs a regularization or renormalization in terms of uh, in the usual terms. And this becomes as follows. So I, I mean the numerator. Uh, sorry. I simply write the following way. Uh, such a um, two-point function, which is not integrable uh, for um, coinciding points, it has a, uh, um, um, has a bad singularity, should be replaced by the following expression. Laplace applied to a ratio of logarithm of x minus y squared times some scale mu, mu squared. Uh, divided by x minus y squared. This is already <coughs> a regularized uh, two-point function, which corresponds to the standard renormalization when we do everything uh, in terms of uh, momentum space integration. <coughs> anyway, the result is as written. Now, if we differentiate with respect to logarithm of mu, we obtain <coughs> If we differentiate this expression like this, we obtain uh, two times. And this is our delta function. <coughs> OK, so it's confirmed. Now, if we pass to. But usually, people don't call this beta function. If this phenomenon is not usually, think, we don't think about it as RG flow. We think about it as uh, just a redefinition of how things transform. No, it's it's the same as RG. To really see a beta function, you need to do. It's not. 
In this case, it's not about a better function. It's about filter definition, right. renormalization. Right. Right. But it can appear in the shape of better function. It could come from the vertices. Right, right. But it's not a physically running coupling. It is. It is. It's it's a, okay. Not with gauge invariant operators, etc. Okay. It's, this, it's precisely that dependence on this. It's another way. This description is another way of doing renormalization, uh, which was developed by Fried, Dan Friedman with collaborators. I mean, but here you need to go to contact terms. If you don't look at it, don't, it, don't, it, it does not always have to be a contact term. In this particular case, it is. It's just a particular case. Actually, I tend to agree with Zohar. I mean, if there's a realization, you have to see logs at separated points. Yeah. If there are no logs at separated points, there's no RG flow. Yeah, if, if there is no way to measure it at separated points, it's not physical. It's just kind of change, choice of... It's, it's, it's a particular case, but the procedure is the same as used in all other renormalizations. No, I, I know. There is a formalism where yeah, it yeah. looks like a beta function, but I'm saying it's not a beta function physically. I'm, in my case, it's also not a beta function. It's an, if renormalization is by a term which is uh, vanishes on shell, it should be a contact term. It's confirmed. So we agree. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, as I said, the question when we do conformal boosts, I, I don't write anything. It would be uh, much more complicated to check uh, even in the two-point case, but in three-point case, it's even more. So I have no definite result in this case, but what would be good for me? A good thing for me would be if, uh, okay, anomalous uh, transformation law already on the level of dilatations means that the trace of the stress tensor isn't, doesn't vanish. Now the question is what, what, what is exactly uh, the answer for the, this uh, an, uh, conformal anomaly. And what we did not decide for because of we were lost in some computations, not because, I mean, it, it, it's a solvable question, uh, but uh, we, we did not solve. Maybe to your ne next uh, jubileum, I will give you more definite results here, okay? <laughs> um, there are two, two possibilities. Well, either it is f squared or it is f minus squared. If it is f minus squared, it is the same as writing f minus d. This operator is the same as this one. And this would mean uh, that uh, as concerned uh, the generator of dilatations or the current uh, or uh, the divergence, the, the divergence of the current. Uh, let me write it in this way. Of dilatations is uh, the stress tensor, uh, the trace of the stress tensor, and it would be equal to this one in the, in the second case. This would mean that I can redefine the transformation law to make everything invariant. And also, uh, this will also apply to uh, boost because uh, the divergence of the current corresponding to conformal boosts labeled by uh, the index lambda equals x lambda times t mu mu and would be also good for, for, for my case. But in this case, it would mean the real uh, br uh, breakdown of uh, boost invariance with respect to boosts. So uh, it looks to, to finish, to, to, to summarize, uh, the situation looks as follows. That in the first possibility, we would probably have an example of a theory which is dilatation invariant, but is not invariant to conformal boost, which is in principle, academically speaking, also interesting thing to ha have such an example. But in the second case, as far as I understand, we would get a fully conformal theory. Okay, thank you. I have to finish. Thank you very much. It's time for a couple more questions. Right. At the classical level, is the theory topological or does it depend on the metric? It does depend on the metric. So why don't uh, conformal class. <laughs> <laughs>
but still. So why does the immunum vanish classically? Uh, the, tra the, 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 the trace of the stress tensor. So just the, the full team you knew. It doesn't vanish. But F minus is, van is zero on the on shell. So on, oh, on shell it vanishes. So there are no solutions that carry energy. That's what we want. Yes, <laughs> that's right. But you know that uh, uh, also in the standard theory, the uh, stress tensor of cell dual fields is vanishing. Right, but uh, if classically... It's, it's no. because it's a stress tensor in Euclidean space. It's no, I'm just asking something general. If classically no solution carries energy, it's we not say energy. that the theory is uh, topological, no? No, no. It's if there is no good. notion of energy density... Even it, it is not an energy. It's uh, the notion of the uh, energy in Euclidean space has no such meaning as energy in, in Minkowski space. It's not positive definite. Fine, but the definition of classical topological invariance is that T mu vanishes on every solution. No, topological invariance means T mu vanishes identically, I think. No, there is no distinction between the two notions. Because you can always add things that vanish on shell. I don't know. Okay, okay. Let it be topological. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's topological classically, <laughs> by any reasonable definition. <laughs> If classically, the immune vanishes. Okay. Yeah, but then uh, there should be some um, selection rule for saying which correlation functions are topological, some, something like BRST. I would think that all of them, all the gauge invariant correlation functions are topological. No. What, 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 what is topological about this expression? It's not gauge invariant. This one? Yeah. But in the abelian case, it is. In the abelian. Even in the abelian case, it is not topological. I don't think that such a straight argument about stress tensor can work. I'm sorry. <laughs> you understand that it's, if it thinks it will make sense of Euclidean complex space time, yeah? It will be some kind of natural measures on finite dimensional manifold of cell dual connections, yeah? Uh -huh. And you just calculate finite dimensional interval. Yeah, that's, that's another paper of the Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so it could be some kind of natural density. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 uh, of course, we should think about this, but we didn't. Yeah. If you solve, you know, the one of the equation motion is an F equals time, right? If you solve and plug in, yeah. you, you, solve, solve, you plug in, then you have more integral or more or less space of yes. by definition. Yes, then, yeah. yeah. And that yeah. integral calculates yeah. something uh, called uh, <coughs> four dimensional Berlin deformer. When you are Analog of the density. It's an integral of modular space of this of something. something yeah. Depends what you calculate. Right? And as I said, that was another paper with the closer with other collaborators. Uh, almost. Here, here there is a degree of freedom P, which is uh, has a meaning of such a, something like normal bundle to the submanifold of instantons inside all uh, solutions. Integrate over P, F equals zero, F by the delta function of, plug in, solve. Yeah, the integral will be over instantons, right, of course. But uh, the, uh, if, you, if you consider uh, some source for P... Oh, if you consider source ah. <laughs> But we'll say that it localizes on the modular space of instantons. It's just yeah. the equations of motion. It doesn't localize on the equations of motion. Uh, in this case, it does. Uh, in particular, this is reflected by the fact that there is only one loop. It's because it's Lagrange multiplier. Well, P is a Lagrange multiplier. You are having a delta function. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. right. So it's a finite dimensional integral in the end yeah. of the day. It's yeah. a finite dimensional. I actually called it uh, the four dimensional avatars of two dimensional conformal. Yeah, 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 I remember. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, given that, in order to keep the timetable, let's study. Thank you.